Don't you just love birthday parties? The balloons, the games, the presents, the cake. Oh, what's this? Dear Lucy, my name is Simon. Please could you do a story about me meeting a monster at my friend's birthday party? Simon had been invited to a party. It was at his friend's house, and so he'd bought a gift, wrapped it, put on a smart shirt, and was now walking round to where his friend lived. Simon was just wondering which part of the birthday party was best, the games or the food, when his friend's house came into view. You could tell it was the right house because there were balloons strung up on the front yard. Simon didn't realize it, but he was grinning broadly. There was already music thumping and Simon could hear some of his friends laughing and playing in the backyard. This was going to be fun, thought Simon. But just as he stepped onto the narrow path, leading up to the front door, he was quite sure he heard the bush beside him sniff back a tear. How unusual, said Simon to himself. I've never seen a sad bush before. He turned to face the bush and asked, excuse me, are you okay? You sound like you might be upset. No, I am, said the bush. They're having a party in there. Oh, said Simon. Don't you like parties? Like them, repeated the bush. How would I know? Nobody's ever invited me to a party before. Simon thought about all the parties he'd ever been to. And yes, he had to agree. He'd never seen a bush playing past the parcel or eating cake at one. Do you think, suggested Simon, that it might be because you're, you know, stuck in the ground? I'm not stuck insisted the voice. I'm just hiding in here so I don't frighten anyone. It was at that moment that Simon realized it wasn't the bush talking, but somebody inside it. Well, if you hide in there, how can anyone invite you to a party? reasoned Simon. Nobody would be able to find you. Hmm, said the voice in the bush. I suppose you're right, but the trouble is, if I come out, I'll scare you so much that your socks will pop off. Simon looked at his feet. He'd never experienced his socks popping off before, and he wondered if he'd need to take his shoes off first. Are you really that scary? asked Simon innocently. Oh, yes, said the voice in the bush. I'm a monster. It's quite well known that monsters are scary. We're quite famous for it. Well, you seem nice enough. Simon said, why don't you come out for a little bit? If I feel my socks moving, I'll uh, get you to go back in again. Oh, okay, said the voice in the bush. Well, just poke my bottom out. And sure enough, a hairy orange bottom with a purple striped tail emerged from the leaves. How's that? Asked the voice in the bush as it wiggled its behind. My socks haven't moved yet, said Simon. Try a bit more. Two short furry legs with clawed feet stepped out, leaving only the upper body inside the bush. Anything? Asked the voice in the bush. Nope, Simon said. He was almost disappointed. Come out a little bit more. right oh said the voice in the bush. An orange and purple furry body appeared, complete with two fluffy arms and hairy hands. You must be feeling something by now, insisted the voice still in the bush. Mm, no, not really, replied Simon. He tried rocking back onto his heels. Maybe, he thought, he should have taken his shoes off first. You might as well come out all the way now. Well, only if you're sure, said the voice in the bush. Get ready, here I come. Simon found himself looking at a furry face, that looked a little like a raccoon, but with two sharp teeth protruding from its mouth. It also had long, floppy ears like a rabbit and a pair of stubby horns. As far as monsters go, thought Simon, this one looked like a cuddly one. Simon smiled. Well, this is embarrassing, said the monster. 
I thought you'd be running off down the street screaming for your mommy. You look quite friendly to me, admitted Simon. Oh, how marvellous, said the monster grumpily. I never get invited to parties and now I find out I'm not even scary. Don't any of your friends invite you to parties? asked Simon. Well, I don't have any friends, said the monster, throwing his hands into the air and marching around in a tight circle. Because so I thought I'm a scary monster. Simon wasn't sure what to say. It was the first time he'd found a monster in a bush. And now he'd got the monster out, he wasn't sure what he was supposed to do with it next. Um, have you got a name? Simon asked. Not really, said the monster, rubbing one of his stubby horns. I sometimes call myself Lord Hairy Scary, but I'm not really sure if it suits me. Have you got a better suggestion? Um, how about Kevin? suggested Simon. Yeah, all right then, said the newly named Kevin. Kevin it is. The pair of them stood looking at each other as the noise of the party floated over the house from the backyard. Well, I suppose you'd better get going then, said Kevin sadly. You're missing your party. Simon felt really awkward. He wanted to invite Kevin to come along, but it wasn't his party. It wasn't up to him who he could invite. But he didn't want to leave Kevin here either. He didn't know what to do. Well, why don't we go around the side of the house? proposed Simon. You might be able to see the party from there. I know it's not the same as being invited though. Okay, said Kevin. Well, I've never actually seen a party before, so <laughs> that would at least be something. So they walked around the side of the house until they could see the children playing in the backyard. Some were dancing to the music, some were playing catch with a balloon, and quite a few were bouncing on an inflatable castle. Wow, said Kevin. It's even more amazing than I thought it would be. Everyone's having so much fun. Simon smiled. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? They were stood beside the back corner of the house, not far from where a table covered in drinks for the guests was. Well, why don't we have a drink from the table? Proposed Simon. I'm sure my friend's mom wouldn't mind you having just one. I know it's not the same as being invited, though. Okay, said Kevin. I definitely never had a party drink before, so that at least would be something. And so they helped themselves to a fizzy soda each. And Kevin was so delighted, his little fluffy tail wagged just like a dog's. Oh, yes, said Kevin, licking his lips. That was even more amazing than I thought it would be. Oh, it was delicious. Simon smiled. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? They were quite close to another table covered in party food for the guests. Why don't we have a little bit of food from that table? Proposed Simon. I'm sure my friend's mum wouldn't mind you having a little bit. I know it's not the same as being invited, though. Oh, okay, said Kevin. Oh, I've definitely never had party food before, even just a little bit. So that at least would be something. And so they helped themselves to some chips and some cookies. And Kevin was so pleased with his little fluffy tail wagging even faster. Just as they were wiping the cookie crumbs from their mouths, Simon's friend's mom appeared with a huge birthday cake. Come on, you two, she said. Time to sing happy birthday. But Simon and Kevin hesitated. They didn't want to get into trouble. What's the matter? Asked Simon's friend's mom. Don't you want to sing? Well, I'd love to, said Kevin. But you see, I haven't been invited. Are you Simon's friend? She asked. Kevin looked to Simon, not sure what to say. So Simon answered for him. Yes, Kevin's my friend. Well, Kevin, said Simon's friend's mom. You look like you're a nice person. And if you're Simon's friend, then I'm sure you must be a nice person. You're most welcome to stay. Now come on, before I drop this thing. Kevin had tears in his eyes, but this time they were tears of happiness. He and Simon sang happy birthday and they all ate cake. And Simon introduced Kevin to everyone. And then they played hide and seek. 
and then they had a dance-off. Kevin had never danced before, but he was very good at bottom wiggling, and that got him into the final three people. He didn't win, but he didn't mind. He was just glad to be there. They watched Simon's friend open his presents, and then there was more food. And then at last, it was time to go home. Thank you for inviting me, said Simon to his friend and his mom as he left. And thank you so, so much for letting me stay, said Kevin. He had a balloon tied around his wrist and thought it was probably the best thing he'd ever been given. Until they got halfway down the path, that is. One of the girls from the party was waiting for them both there, and she was clutching two pieces of folded paper. I hope you can come, she said, handing a piece of paper to each of them before racing off to catch another child. Simon watched as Kevin unfolded the paper and read what it said. It's an invite, said Kevin, to a party. And look, said Simon, pointing to the name at the top. The ink was still wet. It said, to Kevin. And if you like, added Simon, we can go together. Oh, that would be awesome, said Kevin. Oh, I just love that. Would you like to come and play back at my house? Simon asked, which of course, Kevin said yes to. And his little fluffy tail didn't stop wagging all the way there. The end. So that you don't miss a single episode, just click that subscribe button.